Greetings and welcome back again to Innistrad. We're here for a very special event. It's the ceremony of the century, a marriage at moonlight. Let the frightful festivities commence. It seems one, you're one of the uh, fortunate souls on the guest list. So many have sacrificed so much to ensure that you have a good time this evening. So enjoy yourself. There's plenty of drink to go around. Having said that, if you notice that we're getting low, I'd advise you to put a scarf on. Anyway, I'm here to go through some of the things that I've learned from studying the cards in this set with draft and sealed in mind. I'll briefly explain each of the colour pairings and what your decks all want to do. And then the meat and drink will be my picks for the top three uncommons and the top three commons in each colour. Then at the end, I'll round things off with my thoughts on colour rankings for the limited environment. So without further ado, let's jump in. So in blue-white, we've got Disturb returning. Uh, this time the flip side is going to be Enchantment Auras rather than uh, Flying Creatures, which sounds like a downside uh, or a, a down power, but uh, that, that's probably because it is, but we'll see how it goes. Black-white life gain value is different to what was the sacrifice um, archetype previously, so we're going to be gaining life and hopefully drawing some cards and getting additional value from gaining life. Plus one, plus one counters, etc. Bloody Vampires is black and red, as you may well have expected. That returns with this one more focused on the introduction of the, the blood uh, artifact tokens. Uh, I think that's going to be pretty powerful, especially in the limited limited environment to smooth out your draws. So expect that that archetype to be to be decent. Red green seems like it's also had a bit of a, a of a, an increase in power. The front side of the wolves and werewolves this time around look a bit more powerful, but the idea is here that the that at night time those those get even more powerful. So I'll be excited to try that one out again. Green blue is going to be graveyard shenanigans, kind of similar to previously, but I think it's going to look a bit bit different this time around in that we're probably want to going to want to put some defensive creatures down, ramping to some nice big creatures that will win us the game. Uh, there's some decent ramp cards in green in this set on attached to creatures. Blue black is going to be exploit creatures. So exploit is a returning mechanic where when an, a creature enters the battlefield, we can sacrifice a creature for value. Uh, expect that to be pretty good. White red is going to be aggressive pumping, so it's going to be an aggressive deck where we're looking at creatures to be uh, increasing each other's stats um, on attacks or otherwise. See how good aggro is in this format. Red green, uh, black green is an, an interesting one. Uh, toughness matters, so we're looking at creatures that have got big booties, uh, and we'll get get uh, some payoffs for for having larger larger. Uh, I guess larger butt creatures. Uh, there's one specific card that looks to fling your uh, defensive creatures um, to deal damage equal to toughness, which is exciting. So hopefully, hopefully we can we can make that happen. Um, red blue is going to be non-creature spells again, and then green white is plus one plus one counters with the introduction of a training mechanic, with it, which is looking to, to it's, it's seeing smaller creatures get bigger when they attack with something uh, alongside something with greater power. So that rounds out uh, the the archetypes for the format. Let's jump into uh, our top uncommons and commons in each color. We start out with the white uncommons. Uh, easily top of the list here is Resistance Squad, three mana for a three-two human soldier creature. When it enters the battlefield, if you control another human, draw a card. Cards that just replace themselves on ETB are going to be fantastic. The stats are also already okay, already decent, but uh, there's plenty of humans going around, especially in white. So uh, this should be fairly easy to, to, to draw a card off. And even if you don't, a 3-mana three 3-2 three is fine. Panicked Bystander is a two mana uh, human peasant creature. 
Whenever it or another creature you control dies, gain a life. And at the beginning of your end step, if you gained three or more life this turn, transform it. It's a two, two mana, two, two, so we can't really complain about that. And then we're gaining life when creatures die. Um, but the big payoff here, uh, and the reason why this is, makes the list, is when we flip it over, uh, we've got a three, five that we can give death touch to. That's got the same ability as the front side. For two mana, we're getting, we're getting a lot of bang for our buck here. Um, I, th I think this makes sense to be to be in the top three. Our third on my list is probably going to be one of the more controversial includes here. Um, we'll see. I may well be proven completely incorrect on this one, but Valorous Stance is a two mana instant that uh, can give indestructible to one of our creatures, or we can destroy a creature with toughness four or greater. So this is this. This is an improvement on a card that we had in the previous set that destroyed uh, a creature with toughness four or greater. That was for three mana in the common slot, I believe. Um, but the additional opportunity of giving, saving your your important creature from removal um, is going to be is is great upside. It being cheaper is great. But I think this format is going to see a few more higher toughness creatures. Than the previous one did. Uh, I'd, I'd already mentioned previously the uh, high toughness archetype, but but I think there are just a few more bigger creatures going around. So I think this is going to be more important and a, a good removal spell in white. Onto the young, uh, onto the commons. Top of the list I, for me is an easy one. Sagada's imprisonment. We've got three mana enchantment aura. Uh, enchantment, enchanted creature can't attack or block, so going to be premium removal in white. I think uh, I, I would pick this pretty high in the draft if it looks like I'm going white. Um, and then we can also, for additional value, we can exile the enchanted creature uh, to create a blood token. I can see that with with a lot of the, like the exploit mechanics, um, Sagala's imprisonment just just means that that our opponents may well have a, a good creature to sacrifice um, and I suppose that additional ability on the imprisonment kind of kind of helps 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 with that and blood tokens I think are going to be great in in the limited environment here second common drug skull infantry I think is the best best creature around in in the common slot it's a two mana two two to start with so Nothing to complain about there. Uh, and then we've got uh, four mana to disturb the creature. And on the back side, it's an enchantment aura that uh, gives plus two, plus two. So normally enchantment auras aren't, aren't great because we're using up a card um, in this environment. But when it's only really uh, addition, it's, I mean, it's on, on the back of a two mana, two, two. So it's, it's free upside as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the third one to round out the white cards that I've picked is Kindly Ancestor. This just looks looks decent to me. Three mana for a two three life link. Um, I already mentioned that there's going to be uh, life gaining life is going to be a uh, key in this. I mean, it's always good in limited, but uh, there's specific build arounds um, gaining life, and then disturb as you might expect. On the backside is. Um, enchanting creature, enchanted creature has life link. So that uh, rounds out the white cards for the set. Moving on to blue on commons, we've got Storm Chaser Drake at the beginning. Uh, two mana for a two one flyer, fantastic. Looks great. Two, ma two mana, two one flyer. We can't complain about it at all. Great stats. But then whenever it becomes the target of a spell, you control, draw a card. Uh, this one, that one, that one's probably not going to be relevant that often. Uh, it's pr it's more likely going to be if we want to put a an aura, um, a disturb aura onto this flyer to give it a pump or to give it life link. Fantastic that we're going to be drawing a card off it. So I think this is going to be great in that in in blue white. Um, but in anything else, it looks good. 
two mana, two one flyer. Can't really complain. Diver Scarb is a five mana creature, zom a zombie creature. It's a three five, um, and it's exploit uh, trigger. When it enters the battlefield, we can sacrifice a creature, and if if we do, then target creature's owner puts it on the top or bottom of their library. So this is this is a repeat of the Re Revenge of the Drowned from the previous set, but attached to a creature. Um, it was really good removal at instant speed in the previous set. Not quite so good at sorcery speed, but it, it comes with a creature. Uh, I, I think this is this is going to be this is, it's going to be a, a very good card in blue. Gutter Skulker is a four mana three three, not fantastic, but okay. Um, it can't be blocked as long as it's attacking on its own. So I, th I think blue might end up doing this um, fairly often, maybe outside of blue white, but. Uh, um, there you go, uh, a 3 3 unblockable for 4 is, is pretty good, um, especially if these this, this environment looks a little bit more grindy. And I think if you're in blue, you probably want to be from what I'm from what I'm seeing. Um, this third one is probably one that I'm least confident in, but uh, it, it looks decent, especially because on the flip side, to be able to give your biggest creature unblockable if it attacks on its own is just a, a great way to to grind out a win in, in this format so for that reason i think it's a a sensible inclusion in my top three on blue on commons onto the commons in blue we've got binding geist starting us off at three mana three one uh, whenever it attacks target creature and opponent controls get, gets minus two minus oh until end of turn i think this is uh going to look like an easy way of us getting three damage through fairly early um, and then when it doesn't um, we've still got uh, the disturb side of this which enchants uh, one of our opponent's creatures uh, I would assume to give it minus two minus so uh, which I mean I mean in, in blue, if what I was saying before is true, that we're looking to be a, a maybe a slower format, that a, a, a slower deck that uh, wins later on, then this is this is going to be decent to do to do exactly that. Repository Scarb is a second common, uh, four mana for a three three, again with exploit. Um, when it enters when it enters the battlefield, if it, if you exploit a creature with it, then return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand. I think blue is going to be stronger uh, in in a spells deck. Um, I'm, I'm, to be honest, as I was looking through the blue cards, I was struggling to know where the, the powerful blue decks were going to be. Um, but I think uh, spells looks like it's going to be a, a decent blue deck. And that's the reason why the third pick is what it is in Scattered Thoughts, four mana, instant to look at the top four cards of your library put two into hand and the rest into your graveyard so there's there's going to be a few few things that you want to see you, that you don't mind seeing going into your graveyard um, but also just um, instant speed having something like this that gets you card advantage while you're potentially holding up a couple of counter spells um, I, I, I think this could be decent if I'm right in saying that blue might look like wanting to s play, play non-creature spells, but we'll see. In black, what we have here is the easiest top three that, uh, in, in the set as far as I was concerned. Black on commons, we have Hero's Downfall, which used to be a rare and is now an uncommon in this set. Destroy target creature or planeswalker for three mana. Fantastic removal, best removal in the set. And then Felstinger comes in three mana creature with Death Touch, that's a 3 2. Um, and also has Exploit uh, when it exploits a creature, target player draws two cards and loses two life. Uh, that's just a lot of things that uh, one creature is doing. So Death Touch is good in, in limited, drawing two cards and losing two life attached to a death touch creature for three mana fantastic sign me up parasitic grasp is a two mana instant uh, where 
that deals three damage to target human creature and you gain three life. I'd mentioned it before when we were going through white that there are plenty of humans going around um, that we can do three damage to. But if there aren't, then the cleave cost, we can pay three mana and said one black black to do three damage to target creature uh, and gain three life. I think that's it's also some premium removal in black. Uh, so this, this was an easy three picks for our commons. Onto the commons, <laughs> number one pick was also extremely easy. Bleed try is a four mana instant. Target creature gets minus three at 13, minus 13 until end of turn. And if that creature would die this turn, exile it instead. It's just it's just night time all the time. Uh, <laughs> so bleed dry exiles the creature as well, which is going to be relevant in the format. But minus 13, minus 13 is just going to exile any creature that we want to for four mana at instant speed. We'll take it. Surprised that that's a common. Um, courier back is my second pick in black commons. It's a three mana two two flyer, which is great. We'll take it, no problem whatsoever. But then when it enters the battlefield, if you gained life this t this turn, then return up to one target creature from your graveyard to your hand. So we we're getting card advantage if we've gained life, even if we didn't know a three mana two two flyer is perfectly fine. Blood crazed socialite uh, rounds us off as a four mana three three again, but this one's got menace. And uh, when it enters the battlefield, we'll create a blood token. Uh, when it attacks, you may sacrifice a blood token. And if you do, it gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. So like, really what this looks like is a the first time it attacks, it's a five mana, uh, a four mana, five, five with menace, which um, no complaints whatsoever. If you can create more blood tokens, which you probably can, then this card just gets even better. Um, not super super powerful but I, I like it and I think it's gonna be it's gonna be relevant. In red we have rending flames our first uncommon so it's a three mana instant deals five damage to target creature or planeswalker and if that permanent is a spirit it deals two damage to that permanence controller. This it's three three mana instant dealing five damage. Um, and potentially deals two damage to controller depending on what you're targeting. This is just fantastic. I mean, in the previous set, Burn the Accursed was was good, was was decent. Um, red removal that was five mana to do basically the same thing, but ensuring that you got the two damage through. Three three mana instant five damage. Yes, please. Vampire's Vengeance is a three mana instant as well. This one deals two damage to each non-vampire creature. So obviously, if you're in vampires, this is really, really good. Um, but to be able to deal two damage whenever you want to, to to each to each creature, even if you don't have vampires, I think is is still good enough. Um, you, if you're in red, you've probably got a couple of vampires going around, but um, you, you you potentially I think you can easily get a two for one with this, um, maybe even more. Um, it, it, it's it's possible that you need to be careful about when you're using it and it may end up being a dead card but I think for, for the times that it's going to be useful it's, it's worth having it in your hand and um, I think it's going to be a difficult one to play around third uncommon in red is Ballista Watcher four mana, two red red for a 4-3 um, but then we can pay three and tap uh, the creature to do one damage to any target. Fine, um, we like to see some kind of an ability. You're probably going to be hitting face with this, um, and that's that's perfectly fine late game if things stall out, which I suspect that might happen a little bit more than it did in the previous set in this one. Then uh, we've got a mana sink there um, that we can do on our opponent's end step to, to continue to do, do one damage. But then it's is a daybound creature and at night it turns into Ballista Wielder which is a 5-5 five five that does the same thing but without the need to tap it so whatever mana we've got available we can stop, start doing one damage to, to any target. Um, this becomes more relevant because 
the creature dealt damage this way can't block this turn either. So we can pay three mana to make a creature uh, unable to block. Um, I think it's just got it's just got versat versatility there. Um, if we need to get through for some additional damage, so I think in aggro decks it's a good way of just finishing finishing them off. And then in in board stalls, it's kind of a similar thing. We can we can continue to get through the damage. Red commons top of the list. Easy peasy. A braid. Hi, welcome back. Uh, a braid isn't going to be as relevant as it was when it was last printed in the Kaladesh block. Um, that was an uncommon and it was brilliant, but there were a lot more artifacts going around at the time. But you just don't scoff at a two mana instant that deals three damage to target creature. Perfectly fine. The destroying artifacts could well be relevant. We've got a couple of, of decent artifacts that you that you might want to get rid of, but this is just a, uh, a two mana deal three premium removal in red. Um, speaking of removal in red, the second pick is Flame Blessed Bolt. Uh, one mana instant. It's a, it's a shock for creatures or planeswalkers, but then it exiles that creature or planeswalker if it dies um, this turn. Yep, love a shock. We'll take it. And then third one, I picked Hungry Ridge Wolf, which is a two mana 2-2. Two, two perfectly fine but as long as you control another wolf or werewolf uh, it gets plus one plus oh and has trample and if 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 you're in red green then this this gets a lot better but uh, I think this can easily be even even in other archetypes this can easily be a, a two mana three two trampler which for a common is pretty decent On to our fifth and final colour, we have green uncommons. Top of the list we've got Reclusive Taxidermist, which is a 2 mana 1-2 that gets plus 3 plus 2 as long as there are 4 or more creature cards in your graveyard. But it's also a mana dork, so we can tap it for mana of any colour. So 2 mana mana dorks in limited, great, um, especially in green that wants to ramp to things like our second card here. Uh, 7 mana. Um, uh, so our, our, our finisher in green is a Bramble Worm. It's a Reach Trample 7-6. Um, when it enters the battlefield, gain 5 life. And then if it ends up in your graveyard, then you can exile it from your graveyard for 3 mana to gain 5 life. Not quite Honey Mammoth, but it's that kind of a creature. So we are gaining life uh, when, we're, when we're able to cast this. Hopefully we've ramped into it. Um, but a 7-6 Trampler is, is great, but if we need the reach then it's there. Great great creature here um, to uh, as our finisher in green at Uncommon. And then the third Uncommon that I've put, picked out is Oak Shade Stalker, 3 mana, 3-3. Three, three. Lovely. Uh, you can also cast it uh, for 2 more mana, so pay 5. Uh, to give it flash, so we can cast it at instant speed for 5 mana. I think that, that is going to be relevant sometimes, but uh, there you go. So 3 mana for a 3-3, three, three. we've got upside that we can we can flash it in if we want to, if we've got some more mana available. And that's the daybound side. If it's night time, it's a 6-3. And remember this has still potentially got flash. If it's night time, and you flash this in for five mana, you've got a six three flash creature. Um, great, lovely. We'll take it. Moving on to the commons, we've got Weaver of Blossoms for three mana, two three that also taps for one mana of any color, and that's the day bound side. Uh, the night bound side that taps for two mana of one, any one color, and it's a three four. Lovely. Now that's what you call a werewolf. Um, second choice, Wolf Strike, 3 mana instant, um, target creature you control gets plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. If it's night time, then it deals damage equal to its power to target creature you don't control. So this isn't a fight, this is a deal damage equal to uh, power to target creature you don't control. 3 mana instant, great, and then if, if it's night time then we've got additional upside. This is going to be a great removal spell in green. 
it's the one that you're going to want to look out for I would have thought and then the last common that I've pulled out is Apprentice Sharpshooter, 3 mana 1 4 with reach. I do like these 1 4 with reach as 3 mana. Um, this one's got training. You can quite easily attack with a 1 4 um, early on and not worry about it dying, especially when that creature, when it, when it potentially becomes a 2 5 when you do so. Uh, and, and it can continue getting bigger. So I think I think this this could this this is going to win your games in some cases. Um, um, otherwise, it, it can just be a decent blocker for later on if some flyers come out. I would say that the green commons list pulling out three of them was very difficult. There are some fantastic green commons. I would say that the green commons list is the deepest in terms of playable cards even higher than usual rate cards uh, I think this is this is a, a good color for commons for sure so it was quite difficult for me to just pick out three but there you go which brings me seamlessly onto color rankings to round us off I'm putting green at number uh, at number one and um, the reason for that is what I've just said uh, there are just so many commons that are just a great rates, um, just good creatures, decent removal even in green, and then the finishers are good. Um, I I, th I think it will it will pair well with with pretty much it, everything. Um, the the cards are just good in green. Um, I put red second. Um, the 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 top commons and uncommons in red look pretty decent, and I think it's. Um, it's also a fairly deep colour. We can do, go quite a few directions with red um, in this set. I think the blood tokens are going to be quite powerful and limited, um, which is part of the reason why I've got red and black uh, a little bit higher. But I think in, uh, in, from a depth point of view, um, red, red makes it just ahead of black. Um, having said that, I would say that the, the black, the top cards in black for in uncommon and common, are I would say the strongest so three easy uncommon easy picks are uncommon heroes downfall fantastic got some really good removal in black um, the the a couple of the exploit creatures are, are, are great but I think the, the reason that black isn't any higher is because the strength and depth isn't quite there in black in my opinion when I've been looking through the cards so it's got some great cards at the top but then if, if you're having to to draft um, some of the lower picks in black you're probably not going to be quite so happy about them uh, and I guess that also is, is a very similar point in sealed or at your pre-release you're going to be very excited if you see some of the top black um, uncommons and commons but if you don't the rest of them are, are not quite so strong in my opinion hence middle of the road in white um, I, I, I think the it's just, it's just a step down from what I've just said in black. The the top cards are, are, are good, not quite as as powerful as the black black commons and uncommons. Um, a, a step down, and then the the strength and depth isn't isn't quite there. So I've I've got that uh, down at number four, and rounding it off, blue at number five. I've got it down at the bottom of the list. In Midnight Hunt, it was easily top of the list, but this time around, it looks like it's just lacking from my point of view. We, I was struggling to even pick some some powerful commons to to go into the list, um, and to be honest, I, I think it's I think we might find that it's quite difficult to put together something powerful and synergistic in blue. Um, we may need to look at instants and sorceries as one of the more powerful blue decks, but that that's that's norm historically been one of the weaker. Um, archetypes. I've got it down at at, uh, at the bottom. It may well be I, I, I may well be proven wrong on blue and white. If the uh, the new disturb enchantment aura thing ends up being more powerful than I think it's going to be, I just don't think there's there's quite enough value there. You 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 might win win some games with the flyers that you get in in blue and white. Um, but there you go. Those are my color rankings. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a great time with this set. It looks like it's going to be a lot of fun. 
um, going to need a lot of um, thinking about what, what we do with this format as we discover it, as we play with it. Uh, I'm excited about pre-release. Uh, I always love a pre-release and then excited to jump in on some drafting as well. Hope you enjoy it. Stay safe. See you later.